Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today, we're going to be looking at this ESP8266 weather station kit. It's a neat little kit. I believe I got it off Amazon or eBay. It's one or the other. And it supposedly contains all the pieces you need to build a weather station that will not only report locally on its little screen, but is actually uh, connected up to ThingSpeak to give you an IoT dashboardy type view. It does come with a manual, it says that on the box, but actually it's a URL to a GitHub site with the book on it. Now I have had a quick look on there. It, it seems reasonably comprehensive and there are a bunch of steps. But uh, what I thought was, rather than mess around too much with that, let's have a look at this page, which is the page on how to hook everything up. Um, now, <laughs> I should have probably paid more attention though to what these bits are. But you can see you've got an OLED, a DHT11, this BH1750FVI, a BMP180 and your computer. So uh, what I'm going to do is open up all these individual pieces because they're all the pieces we're going to have to hook up and uh, put breadboard it all basically before we start. Now it did seem to have a reasonably complicated guide for setting up this part, which is the uh, effectively the node MCU, the main processor, the Arduino-y type part, um, which seemed a little bit more convoluted than most because generally when you get these, they're good to go. You know, they've got the Arduino stack already on there. So it did, it did seem to come with the stack and firmware flashing program. Um, so I'm not sure if this is a, a vanilla Node MCU or, or if it's just a particular version they would like you to use, but that's, that's one step. Here's the screen. Now I am noticing though that the devices are not coming with the pin headers uh, attached. By the way, this is an earplug box, which is quite cute. <laughs> like that. It's cute, isn't it? Um, let's see what this one is. This looks like a barometric pressure sensor. So we got pressure sensor there and my word, I'm, I kind of thought I'd be able to guess what these parts were but actually they uh, are not immediately immediately obvious. I mean we can go from their part number so we can hook it all up but to actually know what they all do might take a tiny bit more research. Oh this is a light intensity sensor. Oh and there it is right there, this little little component there you can see has a little window on it so we have a light intensity sensor and we have this one which is a pressure sensor and then we have this one which I'd have to say is probably a temperature sensor something like that but these are a neat gadgets for sure let's get the old soldering iron on I'm just sizing up these pin headers so that's your OLED screen and our light lighty sensor <laughs> and what I presume is a temperature sensor but ooh, BMP though maybe it, could it be parametric could I by we be wrong maybe this is a temperature sensor who knows? Anyway, the object of the exercise right now, though, is just to solder these. And for that, you're going to need your soldering iron and a bunch of solder. Fortunately, I have both at the ready. So I'm just going to solder one pin of this. In fact, I'm going to solder one pin on each one. I seem to be having a little bit of difficulty. You might want to put a bit of flux on these. Could be a bit of oxidization in storage. So I'm just going to straighten out that. Okay, nice and straight. You can see there it's at an angle. I like that again. Straighten it out. Try not to burn yourself if you straighten it out. Don't touch the pin that you've just soldered. And the one on the screen is absolutely fine. So you won't really have any problems with this stage. I mean, after this, everything else shouldn't require any soldering. It's a shame in a way because you think for schools or something like that, had they 
come supplied with these pre-soldered headers you just be able to get on with it and that is that so you should just be able to actually start hooking it up so there's our bit of breadboard two bits of breadboard so these are ESP8266 12E um, so normally with these you can see they're so wide in fact this is wider than most it's the entire width of the breadboard so what I would suggest is we're gonna put half there and half there just like that and we, this is quite nice in a way because you have just to show you these this portion of the breadboard has the pins coming out to here and then this is a totally separate area so we can actually then jump up between these pieces that's exactly what we're going to do so I'm looking at our piece of paper here let's start with the first one which is the OLED screen you can see there at the top which says VCC ground SDA SCL etc so I'm going to I don't know which way around it is it sort of implies it might be that way around which is kind of slightly inconvenient from a wiring perspective but let's let's wire it here potentially upside down for now so we're going to hook up our ground and they've given you this generous bundle quite long of cable so you're going to need a lot of grounds though so you're going to have to keep keep choosing ground colors so we're going to look on our board here which is the node mcu board and look for a ground where there's a g there so i've got to presume that is a ground we're going to hook it up like so and the next one is the VCC which is the 3 volts so I'm going to strip off a red and we're going to go from the 3V3 again looking at the board there's 3 volts right here oh in fact there's one next to the ground it's more convenient in fact that's brown not red let's do that that goes to VCC and you can see you could go any of these pins in this column they're all connected in that column and then you have the SCL and SDA lines and they are going let's hook these up again SCL SDA lines they're going to pins D3 and D4 respectively which are these two right here you can see them there D3 D4 and the SDA is the one that goes to D3 and the SDA is the orange. So we're going to make sure that the, there we go, SDA is the orange one and that goes to D4, SCL is going to D3. So far, so good. What else do we have? We have our next one is the DHT11. It's looking for. Which is only three pin device, and this is the only three pin device, so it's definitely this one. And let's just check here 3v3, ground, and D5 for the data. So this is probably an analog output. And you can see on the back, you've got a positive, a negative, and the middle pin is its output. So slightly slightly odd slightly less convenient as well because it implies we have to hook up more more power pins and we're going to be running out of the colors so i think you just got to you just got to keep track of the colors you're using on these things so we're going to go from negative here which is going to a ground I like how we're using white as well and then the positive we can use that brown then that's going to the three volt line it's a big old mess isn't it once you'd be done with this but I suppose it's just for testing after this you could actually put it into an enclosure and solder all these and then we need to go to pin D5 on our board which is here and that's going to that output pin which is right there so you can see how that 
hooked up and that should be pretty good and uh, we're gonna just race away with these other two parts to be honest you can just mount them off the bottom here if you like I kind of think that's how they're intending you to do it nothing too special um, if you do have regular breadboard you probably will find it a little bit easier because you have the power bus bars on there you won't have to have so many wires like this all jammed up um, so I'm just looking through the list I don't see the uh, it says GY30 on here but I think that's the same as, as this device you can see it's um, it's actually got five pins output so we'll hmm, we'll just work with it as is so we're gonna have our ground and our power so we have our ground and our power and we're gonna put the power to the three volts that's on this side of the board and then we're gonna put our ground that's on the ground on this side of the board just because they're a convenience and then we have to find pins Oh, D3 and D4, and those are the same that we used before because it's uh, on the spy bus, so it's, uh, or is it I squared C? Um, sorry, yeah. <laughs> so that's handy. And I'm going to hook those then up to the other side of the board. So our grey wire is the SDA, and our purple wire is the SCL so we can just hook those in like that and then that's all hooked up nicely so that's that side done and we just have our last device again also hooked up to the same uh, bus in fact I'm going to hook the bus connection up first just because we can it's simple so we're taking by the way we're taking this bus connection back to here every time but you could just take it from the previous device you can just daisy chain them but as it's all coming from the same place, it's nice and nice and neat anyway. Um, so D3 we have is the blue wire, which is the SDA. And I'm just looking at this little guy. Not so easy to see which pin. Ah, okay, SDA, SCL, ground. So our SDA. SDA and SCL so we want to go something like that blue uh, blue brown and then we have ground and V in that follows so that's not too bad we'll just do that ground and V in and we'll hook those up over here Now, I know it's a bit of a rat's nest, but bear with me. I'll hold it up to the camera in case you're following up with the same colours. But be careful. Watch the video to the end in case I've made a mistake. So that's how I've got that one. That's how I've got that one. And we're reusing a lot of the colours, actually, so you're going to get confused among all this meandering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up now the desktop software and uh, get this up to speed, make sure the firmware's loaded and anything like that and any gotchas I'll let you know about. I'm back! And there was a small issue on the board in that the SCL and SDA lines for the screen were the wrong way around. I could see that because in the software it was saying it was having trouble detecting this BMP180 which is a pressure sensor. Um, Whereas this one is a temperature humidity sensor, so I think I got those a bit confused as well, but it doesn't matter. It's all connected now. Um, I followed these steps in the instructions. They were all nice and simple. Uh, just follow them up, set, set up the API keys as requested, put in your SSID, and then when you power it on, you'll see this happening. So it's connecting to the Withy. Look at that, updating, updating, done. And there you go. And it's downloaded the time and everything off the internet. I've not done anything there. So you can see a representation on the bottom of the time and the temperature. 
Now there's no buttons on this, but perhaps you could actually add some buttons into this Arduino sketch. So you could select between these menus yourself. And I think it pretty much just sits there and rotates through these, giving you that three day weather forecast that it's downloaded from that API. And there you go, that's the current temperature and weather conditions scattered to clouds with a little cloudy icon. So it has nice pictures and things. And then that's your little three day forecast. Now there is something else this does, and this is why you have that ThingSpeak API um, key as part of the framework. And I'm going to try to show you on this tablet. Uh, let's refresh this. So this is the ThingSpeak website, and as part of the instructions, it shows you how to set this up with the API key so that the device can report to ThingSpeak. And this is a publicly shareable channel I've created. In fact, if you go onto this uh, channel, you may be able to see this if I haven't pulled this down or remember to delete it. Um, but you can see here, you can set up the different fields and I've set up, uh, does it say here? Yes, temperature, humidity, light and atmosphere. That's in the Y axis. And then it's just time. So. Everything that is actually being locally recorded is actually being stored on the ThingSpeak so you to, to be able to view that. And that's really useful. I wasn't aware of ThingSpeak, but I think I will use that for other IoT projects because the ability to log the results somewhere always useful. I'm just noticing how shiny this screen is. I'll put that there. Actually, I'll put it away so you don't get distracted. Um, so it's quite interesting, really, because it appears to me that this screen here may or may not be showing certain information. So I kind of feel, looking at it, um, it's showing 9.3 degrees here, but I don't think that's the internal temperature because the thing speak is showing me a 24 degrees reading. So I think this screen is showing information that it's downloaded via that API. And then the thing speak is showing the information from the sensors. So I think it would be a really good next step if you're working on this to actually modify this UI and add a few extra steps to show you in real time what's going on with the sensors on board. It's, it's, it's peculiar, isn't it, that they've gotten this far and not that done that. I think if you were just going to make only a weather station, yeah, which is going to be pulling data from the internet, then you don't need any of these uh, other sensors. You just need your node MCU and that component, and that could be really tiny. Um, you could you could fit that um, into a, a box, not much bigger than. Well, in fact, let me just show you. What I've, if you remember from the last video, um, where I fit the microwave sensor and the node MCU into a box, you could definitely fit something like that into a little package that small, couldn't you? So yeah, there you go. I think that's quite cool though. I don't remember exactly the price. It wasn't it wasn't particularly expensive. Um, I'll put a link down below if I can uh, remember where I got this from. But it's a nice little project, and it's certainly uh, an interesting one to get you started uh, in the whole uh, API, uh, IoT, Node MCUE type stuff. Um, because it's got lots of examples there. The whole loading of the libraries and the Arduino management, although it's a little bit tedious, if you just follow the steps, it's only a few steps and you get going with that too. So probably a great way to get started. Hope that's of some use to you. Please feel free to uh, contact me on Discord, um, uh, buy me a coffee via Patreon, and uh, keep up the chat in the uh, YouTube text chatty box down, down, below. As ever, thank you for watching.